to teach us how to teach a new way. Baby, then they'll listen to what you have to say. Welcome to Truth Forms, a forum to discuss truth in a friendly surrounding, like we dwell home at the kitchen table. I'm your host, Dr. Smith. I do have the right to perform the song, the notes, and the lyrics as licensed by BMI. We'll continue to lead compelling, relatable, honest conversations. My guests will range from community leaders, wonderful college students, real people whose stories will touch and inspire you. We will have conversation around relationships, personal struggles, amazing triumphs, and even compelling topics in the news. If you'd like to be a guest at the kitchen table, you can call us at 269-282-1490 or email us at kingdombuildersworldwide2 at gmail.com. My vision is to catalyze energize i got bags i need prayer okay keep the script and bring people together i want to share some things that are extremely essential if you're going to be successful you got to find out who's in the network and once you know who's in the network you can glean from each other and that's what we're going to do today that's what they did in africa that's how they reawakened the africans they were all join together at night and just share stories so our next generation don't continue to repeat the things we made. I'm excited today to introduce some exciting, dynamic, wonderful entrepreneurs, exciting, intelligent young ladies to the show. Let's put our hands together. And because I want to respect them, I don't want to mess up everyone's name. So to my right is Marisol. That's that right? Yeah. And the last name is Vanquez. Vasquez. Vasquez. And then I have Tommy Kirk daughter, Asia Kirk. Yes. Margaret Kirk daughter. All right. And then I have Kalia. No. <laughs> Kalia. Kalia. Ellis. That's Kara's daughter. I got it right, y'all. I got my main man, Deacon Doug Jones, as my co-host. And of course, my producer, Tiffany Smith, Ronnie Hoyt, Carl, and <coughs> Mike Campbell. On the camera, I got the big man, Butter, Melvin, Charles McKnight, and Yvonne Armstrong. Let's put everybody's hands together one more time for our crew. Well, we got some exciting young ladies on the show today, and they have one thing in common. One thing in common, they're all, I'm not gonna say same grades because I know about you two. Are you, what's that two? Yeah. Okay, all freshmen, now they're about to become, what, sophomores? Mm -hmm. And they attend Spartan, Lansing, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State. So Green is in the house. Mm -hmm. I would like for you to give us an introduction to who you are for about one minute. Tell us what you majored in. Same with you, same with you. Um, my name is Marisol. I'm majoring in environmental engineering, and I'm 18. Um, I think I'm changing to business soon. So yeah. <laughs> that's kind of tight. Bioengineering. That's that's good stuff. You get good grades this semester. I hope. <laughs> okay, Margaret Kirk. Hi, my name is Asia, and I'm majoring in human bio on a pre-dental track, and I want to be an orthodontist one day. Okay, hi, I'm Kalia Ellis. I major in human bio, pre-med track, a minor in Spanish, and I want to be a medical examiner. They got some tough, tough, those some tough, mm -hmm. those some tough majors, Digga. Yeah, I know. Well, before I <coughs> let loose and, and celebrate these young ladies, I am first of all just flattered and honored that they're here. And this is a prime example that everything is not as bad as a scene. But I do want to address, unfortunately, many of you all, I've received several phone calls, so I feel I should address it because we're live. We will also, uh, you'll continue to see it later, but since it's live, I would like to address what happened last night. Uh, unfortunately, as we continue to celebrate and honor 
and memory, memorize, think about the loss of Joe Bowser, uh, Brother Davis, we call him. Kari. Kari, I never want to say his name wrong, Kari and Wendell Daniels. We have these three young men that are passed away because of gun violence. We have moms that's broken, their hearts shattered, fathers in pain. And then <coughs> today, last night, we have some of the same senseless shooting. I would continue to say, I'm not going to blame anyone right now, but I'm going to ask the older community. You know, we've had constant meetings about this. We've had rallies. We've had come together to speak. And it's like the more we talk about it, it seems like we raise it. It seems like the more we break it up, it happens. And so just maybe we need to come up with a different approach. I will be sharing some things with y'all in the future regarding what I think we should consider doing. But right now, I want to <coughs> celebrate these young ladies, but I have to ask them their thoughts. On that, since they are in that age bracket, they're 18, 19, 20, and so I like to know you know, what's they thought about all this? So if you were here or not here, if you were in town or not in town, if you heard about it, what was your thoughts when you heard, here we go again, shooting, what y'all think? Anybody can chime in. Okay, um, for me, me having a brother, when I hear about it, it breaks my heart that our community is getting destroyed like this and that, um, it's like, it's, it's just a lot, especially being away at school and not knowing like what's gonna happen or what's going home at, like what's going, going on back at home. So for me, it is kind of personal and it has me like, kind of worried, kind of like, I don't want to come back here. Like, that's the topic. I don't like really coming home, so yeah. What about you, Margaret? I'm quick said Margaret. What about you, Asia? <laughs> Honestly, I just think it needs to stop. I just feel like everyone should just be able to get along and be able to just hang out together without worrying about getting shot or just dying. I just feel like everyone should just get along. You have a thought on this young lady? Um, a little bit. What's your thought? Um, I just think it's bad <laughs> and it should stop because it brings pain to the whole community, not just one person. So. so did you all know each other before you went to Michigan State? Yes. yes. Did y'all all plan that y'all was going to go to Michigan State? Yeah. <laughs> For the no. most part. Oh, kind of. Did we? <laughs> yeah. We did. Did you all go to Battle Creek Central together? Yes. Really? You all graduated the same year? Yes. Yes. <laughs> did y'all go to the prom together? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoa, man. So, so. Thick and thin. Were y'all able to roommate at Michigan State or it was, it was, they broke y'all up? How'd that work? Uh, we roomed together. And really? She was like next door in a yeah. different hall, like mm -hmm. a two minute walk. So, did y'all like parents like get together to make all this happen or y'all like told your parents, we all want to go to Michigan State? How, how did that happen? Anybody, how did that happen? Um, we got accepted. And then So you all three applied? Like did you say did you say to Arizona, I'm gonna try for Michigan State? Or did you say to Kylie, I'm gonna <laughs> apply for Michigan? Is that what y'all did? We applied to like all like a bunch of different schools. So like I remember yeah. we were sitting in the library on a what was it? It was like during the week. At Back Creek Central. At yeah. Back Creek okay. Central. And we were sitting there, we had to type our essays to apply. And boy, we was in tears. We had a deadline. We was like, yeah, we going to make it. It was the day yeah. before. Yeah. We going to make it. We going to get in. We got this. That was very emotional. We was there till like 7 p.m. And school got night. out at like 2. Really? Yeah. What other school did you guys apply to that you would have liked to have gone to? Um, my, I wanted to go to U of M um, oh. or HBCU. Okay. But yeah, Michigan State was top three. Top three. Why? Just curious. Um, they have the best forensics program for their mm -hmm. master's degree. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I'm looking at three intelligent young ladies, and you know you have that little rumor. And I, I'm pro Battle Creek Central. Uh, I usually sing my little song Bearcats, but I'm not gonna sing it this time. But I'm you. talking to you three now, <laughs> and you are did very good. So, what is that image 
when you hear people say, well, Battle Creek Central, thumbs down, go to another school. I'm looking at three dynamic, successful uh, young ladies that obviously did good in school at Central, and now you're doing well collegiately. Where did that rumor come from, and why did y'all fall in those cracks? I think it's just really who you hang out with. So we've been friends since elementary. Elementary. Mm -hmm. So like. So what school was that? Valley, Valley, Valley View. View. Yep. All y'all three went to Valley View. Yep. Yeah, we my were, last year. We were in the REACH program. Yeah, we were in the REACH program, which is like a gifted Like a REACH program? It's a, a gifted, um, okay. talented program, so that's where we met. Um, and ever since, like, it's always just been us three. Really? We cheered together, danced together. A lot of our classes were together. So. I never knew that. I never knew that. <laughs> well, that's great. So, um, I do know you were on the court. Did y'all make the court? No. Y'all didn't make the court. So, did y'all hate on her, or did y'all try to support her? <laughs> support her. No. We support it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, so I think that's awesome. Um, Ma Margaret, Asia, <laughs> honestly, how you doing in school right now? Did you miss? I know you got great parents. I know your mom and your dad. Be honest. Tell the truth. Did you cry when you got dropped off on the, I guess, the first day or when, whenever your mom and dad finally left and you saw them drive off because you guys, you all are freshmen, so you can't have a car yet, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you don't have a car and they drove off. Did you cry? Yes. I cried a lot of times. Really? A lot. Did you tell your mom and dad you cried or you told your dad you cried? No. You just kept it to yourself? They just know. They just know. They know I'm a crybaby. So. For real? Yeah. Erisa, what about you? Um, I didn't cry. You didn't cry? No. You didn't cry? I know you cried. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you get on Facebook cry. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. Listen, I, I'm, I'm just proud of you all. Um, now you all have this journey. Uh, again, when I'm interviewing people, I'm not here to uh, criticize anyone that have may have made some of those mistakes. Everybody know. I'm going to love everybody, but when I can celebrate three young ladies that are doing well, I think they should get praised, and I think we should kind of throw a thumbs up when you have young ladies that's trying their very best. Uh, to my knowledge, Aerosol, are you uh, dating right now? Um, yes. <laughs> uh, Mar uh, Margaret, <laughs> Asia, are you dating right now? No. <laughs> Are you dating right now, Miss Ellis? No. Okay. So, how serious? Um, pretty serious. You knew him in high school? Yeah. Back Creek Central? Yeah. He's in college? Um, I don't, yeah. What college he go to? <laughs> KCC. Okay. All right. Okay. And what your friends think about, what y'all think about, since y'all are tight, what y'all think about, her dating, do you see a, a distraction or is she good with it? Y'all friends now, so friends tell the truth. <laughs> y'all friends, what y'all think about it? Um, that's what I mean. Margaret, I mean, <laughs> Asia. Asia, what you think about it? Um, okay. As friends, as friends, friend. do y'all have those, okay. those girls talk? Do y'all yeah. have girls we, talk? We do. We do. Okay, so okay. have some girl talk on the show. <laughs> Yeah, give me okay. some girl talk. This is girl talk. Brothers, we should be cool. Girl talk right here. Let's go. Okay, um, I feel like it can be a distraction to a certain extent. Um, I'm not going to say that's the reason why I ended my relationship, but that is one of the reasons because I want to focus on me. So I feel like she could do that too, especially since like they're in two different cities and like he's doing his own thing with his career. And I just want to see her be successful in school and not rely on a... Uh, when you're a friend, you're killing at yourself in the, in the camera. So when you when you when you, when you, when you hear your friends say that, what you think about that? Um, I mean, I agree to a certain extent. Like, I would never rely on a male for happiness for anything. So uh, excuse me. All right. Yeah. Now, I know these. I know these. You two got uh, the piercing in, in your in your nose. Yeah. Now you don't have one. Can't have them go to church. Huh? church. I just don't want one. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> so, you're not dating? No. Is there a reason why? 
Not really. I don't know. <laughs> so, um. <laughs> so let's talk about this. When my daughter went to college, I, I was even though I may have had some experience when I was younger, total. I don't. I don't involve myself in it anymore. But when you first came on campus, you know it was like you guys were like leaving twelfth graders. When you was the twelfth grade at Bat Creek Center, you was like the big women on campus. Or when you were. You guys went from, they didn't go ninth grade, right? Eighth grade, right? Eighth from, grade, you were yeah. like big people on campus. But well, now y'all back little freshmen. When you saw those seniors, and you saw those fraternities and sororities, and you saw all oh, this hoopla, like, wow, a new world. <laughs> Was that a distraction? Um. This one right here. <laughs> <laughs> it was it? <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it was, was it? Was, yeah. What's the difference from that and a date and a boy? Um, well, okay, he was still a kid. Um, at heart, um, very, um, I'm not gonna like, you know, be Right, right, I got very you. Nice. Yeah. Cause they can't hear you now. He was still a kid, <laughs> so I'm gonna be very nice. That's what she said. <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah, but um, I just feel like at State, like, we all have the same goals and, okay. like, ambitions. So, like, I just see their whole demeanor is different compared to somebody in Battle Creek. I feel like in Battle Creek, they all have the same mindset. Nobody's growing and developing. So, when I got to State, they all older, responsible. But you're from Battle Creek and you're growing. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I want to encourage everybody to that. You know, you're from, but back to this sororities. Did you three get involved in any type of uh, pledging activities? Did y'all consider it? Did you consider it? A little bit, yeah. Delta? No. Um, gamma. Gamma? Yeah. What made you decide not to? I just don't think it's for me. Okay. What about you, uh, Asia? Have I considered it? Yes. Yes, I have considered okay. it. Okay. All right. Is the jury still out? You haven't made a decision yet? Yes, the jury's still out. The jury's still out. What about you, Kalia? Ka. Kalia? Yes, I considered it. Is the jury still out? Meaning you haven't told it? I mean, you still may do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the reason to become a Greek is for what? What's the purpose of becoming a Greek? I like to know because we have young kids coming up, joining college. And again, I'm not badgering Greeks at all. I'm just interviewing these great young people. What's the benefit of becoming a Greek? Um, you feel like work connections. It's like a family. Um, you feel like you belong in something, especially with Michigan State being a majority white school. Once you find where you belong, it just makes it for more at home. Okay. The sisterhood. The sisterhood. Mm-hmm. So, um, your name? Marisol. Marisol. Marisol, uh, you consider yourself to be a Latino, Hispanic, um, black? Hispanic. Hispanic. And... Is that considered a minority in your view? I'm asking you, not society. From your view, from your training, from your upbringing, do you consider yourself a minority? Yes. Okay. And you are, why? Because just like, I feel like, what is it, Hispanics just like have like a setback here in America as well as any other minority. And like, and on campus, there was, I barely seen any Hispanics. Wow. Yeah. So when you hear Asia and Kylea, cut Leah, uh, talk about, like she just said, the blacks, the blacks, the blacks, the blacks, how, how that make you feel? Because, you know, sometimes I have very close Hispanic friends. I have some of my congregation. And I may sometimes say that the blacks need to do more. Do the Latino, do the uh, do the Hispanics see themselves as being left out? If if the blacks is trying to push the blacks and the Caucasians, they're already pushing themselves. Do y'all ever sometimes feel like y'all not a part of this agenda? I don't. I'm not really sure about the whole society, but I know I push myself. So I don't know. I don't really know how to do you, that. Do, do you ever feel? When when your friend talking about we gotta do this for the blacks, do you ever feel they're not referring to you? 
a little bit, but I know I got to do it for my, like, culture, too. Okay. To get us okay. ahead, too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, you know, that's good because I like to know that because... DJ, you know, as you know, we have a pretty strong population starting to come. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to know how do we make that same culture feel just as important and how they can become just as involved in whatever the struggle may be. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just curious. I don't know if you ever had a conversation with Susan at all, but I just wonder sometimes how they think about it. I, I believe, uh, you know, it, it is something that's, that's always in their mind. You almost can't help but think that you know, you hear about, you know, um, whites doing one thing and then the blacks pushing their agenda. Um, and quite, quite honestly, I wouldn't have known you were Hispanic um, if, if Bishop hadn't said anything or didn't hear your last name because you look multiracial, you look biracial. So um, is it because, is it the way that people assume that you don't feel like you're not, that you're a part of it? A part of, you know, when black people are talking about, you know, advancing black people, because you have black friends, mm -hmm. and you look at yourself as a minority, but you don't look at yourself as being separate. Yeah. Right? Right. You look at yourself as being a part. And, and I guess I really want to know why. Is it because of how they make you feel? Do, do, do people know that you have a different heritage? Yeah. Okay. It's people that know you. Yeah. But if they didn't know you, they wouldn't know. Correct? I'm not sure what they know. Okay. But... So in your application, you put Hispanic, Latino. Check that, Mike. Y'all put African American or Black, but you just made the comment that Michigan State is not too many Latinos. Right. How? What's the racial line in, in Michigan? Is it majority whites at Michigan State? Mm -hmm. Really? And those that you all know that made it, is it an academic reason? Is it? Is it? Is there? Is it a high? Requirement to get into Michigan State? Yeah. yeah. It is? Okay. Okay. So when you hear about things such as um, a while back, I don't think y'all get in trouble for this, but, you know, you guys were on the news. Uh, you had this longtime coach, trainer. Mm -hmm. Did that impact you guys at all when y'all made the decision or you didn't know nothing about it? Your parents didn't know nothing about it? So you oh. care less. Jerry Nassar. Um, they sent all of us a letter about it. Really? Yeah. Prior to? To try to get you not to be... I think, was it after we got accepted? It was, yeah, it was after they yeah. sent us all a letter about it. To kind of calm you down, let y'all know they fixed the problem? Yeah. Yeah. Were you all aware that the former governor of Detroit, of Michigan, used to be the president of your school? Did y'all know that? No. Okay, let me make sure I got my facts right. John yeah. Inger was the president. Yeah, he was right? interim president. Yeah, he was an interim. Oh, president. he was never the full president. No. Okay, because no. I want to make sure I got my data right. Right. Well, anyway, John Inger, John Engler. But he was the governor mm -hmm. of Michigan, and then he was made John interim president before they came up with one. And so that's how you can see the dynamics of of that school. Um, is there any artifacts of Magic Johnson around the school? Yeah, here's a statue. In the Breslin, too. In the what? The Breslin Center. Yeah? Mm -hmm. He's got a statue, too? Mm -hmm. Like the Michael Jordan statue in Chicago? They got one like that on him? I've never seen that, but okay. it's like outside of the Breslin Center. Yeah? Yeah. It's okay. Big. So if I gave you all a, what, five year, you, it's your first year you're graduating, I mean, you finished one year. The way y'all talking bio stuff, you talking about maybe five more years? Are we talking five more years of school for you all? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. If yeah. you stay on course. Yeah. Or more. Or six more years. I got like six plus like with med school and stuff. Right. Eight to twelve years. Mm -hmm. So so what is your five year goal? Uh we're talking like in two well, let's just do age. You are right now how old? Eighteen. Oh yeah. Young, I'm sorry. You're eighteen. At 23, what does 23 look like to you? To you. At 23, you look in the mirror, how would you like your future to look like? See yourself at 23. Marcy. Marisol. Marisol. Um, successful. I want to be successful. Tell me what you're doing, Marisol. Don't just say, <laughs> tell me what you're doing, Marisol. I want to... Is she just shy all the time or she's just being acting? 
We just go. Yeah. So it's it's <laughs> not really being shy. It's more okay. Cool. Aerosol, tell me, five years, what it looks like? Uh, Say stuff like Mary, five kids. Uh, divorce. Uh, uh, I'm an owner of a company. Um, I want to start a business. That's where I want to be. Are you starting one or you want to have one? I want to have one. What? Um, like, is it? I don't know how to say like what. Say it. Aesthetician, something. I don't know. Aesthetician. Oh, so you like, want to start doing the uh, putting stuff on their face? Yeah. And you want to do all that? Yeah. Oh, and that's that's getting big. That's getting real big. Yeah. Okay, okay. So what you have to do is you need to write it down. And you need to look at your vision and work towards everything it's going to take to get that. What about you, Asia? Well, Five years, 23. 23. I plan on being in my first year of dental school. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So you want to be the dentist? Mm -hmm. Orthodontist. Orthodontist. Are you gonna, do you want to practice here or you want to practice somewhere else? Probably somewhere else. Far away or just somewhere else in Michigan? Yeah. Um, I haven't really decided. So it depends on like where I'm at. It depends on where I go to school at. Okay. For okay. dental school, and okay. then I'll make the decision okay. of staying in Michigan or going out of state. Do you see yourself five years family? Family. Like husband. Oh, in five years. Um. Not yet. Probably dating. Okay. Okay. Kalia, five years. Five years. I see myself in medical school. Okay. First year of medical school. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to show this clip in five years. Unless the Lord <laughs> comes back and take us. And we're going to see how we're doing. Right. We write it down. It's now, guess what? It's okay to change. <clears throat> Don't ever feel pressure. You do stuff that you're comfortable with. Sometimes we as parents, and I know I've been guilty of that also, you put pressure, you find what makes you happy, what passion, what you would do for free. And that's what you would enjoy doing. If you really want to do that stuff, you'll do it for free, you'll be good at it. And then guess what? Always remember become always stay valuable and as long as you three are valuable success will come to you you three will never have to seek success success will come to you if you three remain valuable tell me about your family mom dad brothers siblings whatever you tell me about your family um i got two siblings and where you at in that chain i'm the middle child okay so you have an older older sister younger brother okay Okay? Yeah. Live with, I mean, you know. My mom. Okay. Mom raised you? <coughs> Both parents raised me. Okay. All right. Okay. Right here by the creek. Yep. All right. And you went to what elementary school? I went to NJ, then I went to Valley View. Okay. Okay. And Miss Kurt, what you got? Who your family? I live with both of my parents. I'm the youngest of six. And right now I live with my parents and my sister and her son. Okay. Sister and her son, okay. And your dad name is who? Tommy Kirk. And your mom name is what? Margaret Kirk. Now, is Margaret Kirk a preacher? Huh? Is she a preacher? She's a prophetess. She's a prophetess. Well, praise the Lord, prophetess. And don't they have like a uh, like a business? Yes. What is it called? Massage Green Spa. All right. Mm -hmm. You gave a little pub. And your dad <laughs> worked at Post, right? Yes. Okay, okay. Where do your parents work at, if you don't mind? Um. Right, not okay, cool. Got it. What about you? Um, I'm like, yeah, I am a middle child. Um, older brother, older stepsister, um, and then a whole bunch of younger siblings. <laughs> yep. And I live with my dad currently. When I moved back from school, I moved in with my dad. And your mom has started a new career, right? Yes, my mom is in Atlanta training to be a flight attendant through Delta. All right, all right, all right. So, I, got a, I got a question go for, for these young ladies. Bishop, you guys have obviously been friends for a long time. And did you guys, you know, you have to have, you know, decent grades, you know, to get into a school to apply and get accepted. Did you guys push each other as you were coming up, you know, in school? You did homework mm -hmm. together? Did your parents, like, you know, f you know, enforce it until you can't go outside until your homework mm -hmm. was done? What, what led up to you guys getting the good grades 
And what did that look like growing up? Did you guys help each other out? Were you each um, other's support? I know my friends helped me a lot with uh, support because there was a lot of times I wanted to give up during our friendship, but they kept pushing me to do better. They kept telling you don't give up? Yeah. Okay. Me? Mm -hmm. Um, I always liked school, so basically, like, I pushed myself and my parents pushed me also. Okay. So you always liked school? Easy. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Good for you. Um, I didn't. <laughs> I I enjoyed school from like elementary through high school. Like high school was real easy for me. Now once we got to college, like if I did not have these two here, I I don't know. I would have like barely made it. Like they are my supporters. Because you, know, you guys study together. Yeah. Just study right, together. Go okay. to class make together. Sure class. Class. Make sure I wake That's up good. on time. Peer pressure. Mm -hmm. Make sure I eat. I oh yeah. I won't mm -hmm. eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. If you three had to pick that one, like, leader, who would it be out of you three? Probably Kalia. Whoa, me. Oh, uh, but that's what she <laughs> said. See, because she, she fought for that, too. You said Kalia. So who you going to say? Like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, like there's, like, like, different, like, different roles. Like, like, got different it roles, depends right? on where, like, the setting, too, though. Yeah. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, hey, y'all, let's go on to Battle Creek. They got this big party going on. Who would be the one that say we better not go? Uh -oh. And <laughs> <laughs> nobody. <laughs> would, Who would want to say we probably should go? We got to study for an exam. Who would be the one that would say that? Let me ask those kind of questions. Okay. Ooh. Well, we don't really like to party in Battle Creek. Okay. But. Well, forget that. <laughs> There's a party going on. There's an exam taking place. Who would be the one out of those three that would have the logic? Who would be the logical one to say? I know we're gonna miss fun, but let's not go. Who None three? Of None of us. <laughs> oh my. Okay. 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 Well, can you answer that question? So who would just be the leader of the group if y'all if y'all had to pick a leader? Does it depend you, on the situation? Why Why did you say clear? So so um, give a give an example. Then, if you give. So I don't know. if I feel like if we're in a situation like. Um, going to class. Okay. Me and her, we had two classes together this semester. Um, and we're waiting for the bus and it takes too long. I'm like, Marissa, you want to go to class? Oh, well, the bus is taking too long. So, okay, let's not go. Asia will text, why aren't you guys going to class? Like, where are you guys going? Like, okay. <laughs> so when it comes to stuff like that, like, she's more like, yeah. She, Asia, she, mm -hmm. she, Asia, so Asia kind of grounded on that school thing. Yeah. She, yeah. She's, well, good for you, Asia. <laughs> Good for you, Asia. I'm good for you because I just hate three of y'all. Just to, but now, can we can we be honest? When I asked you first on the show, you said we'll find out. But don't y'all have y'all like grades now? Don't you got something? They have no grades on Okay, but y'all got something from your first semester. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. so tell me how y'all did your first semester. Um, I didn't fail. Any classes? <laughs> That's the answer. I didn't drop out, so here we are. That's a good answer. Okay, you didn't fail. You didn't drop out. Okay, cool. What about you? I did. Okay, I did good. I didn't fail anything, um, but I know I can do better. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Kalia. Whew! That first semester, it's it's like. You think you're all prepared for it, but you're not. My first yeah. semester was uh, an experience. Mm -hmm. I didn't fail a class. I passed all my classes. But knowing, like, my potential and where I was at in high school, like, coming from top 10 yes. to feeling like you bottom 10, but I don't know if I'm really bottom. But that's just how it feels because okay, I know right. I can do better. So, yeah. So, as we deal with this whole suicide stuff <clears throat> and stress, <clears throat> let's talk about that. Why is it that 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds your age – that they get so stressed, they just like commit suicide. Tell me about life. Why life that way? Help me understand, being in the mid-50s, help me understand well, how that happened. Because I don't know, and I want to hear from your world where we're not justifying it, but y'all can say, I understand. I may not think it should have happened, but you guys will say, I understand. Whereas my generation may say, that was ridiculous. Why would you do that? So I, I want to stay conscious of what goes on in the mind of a student, college student, and just people, period. What make a young person want to take their life? 
Um, it's it's a lot being yeah. away, um, school adjusting. You're around new people. It's sometimes you just feel like like you don't have like you feel like you have the support, but not the support you need. So it's a lot of parents that's like. You should be doing this. Um, like I know for me, like my dad was like, I was on the dean's list my freshman year, and like that type of pressure. My god brother goes to MSU, so I'm always getting compared to him. It's a lot of pressure on like as us as kids, and like not having a job. I mean, you can get a job, but it's a lot like balancing jobs, school stuff. Like it's really a lot like mentally and physically. It's days where I would just come in my dorm and just cry because I have like especially Wednesdays I would be up from. Nine, when you get back to my dorm until like 10, 11 o'clock in the afternoon or at night. That is stressful. It really gets to the point where you just want to break down. Margaret, I mean, I'm sorry, Asia. <laughs> you look so much like your mama. Asia, go ahead. Um, I think sometimes students feel alone, especially like being away from home. They may feel alone if like they're not around like the, around a, the right group of people. Um, and then also stress from school, and it's a lot of pressure. So pressure can get to you. I say the same thing. Like, everyone has a different mindset, different living conditions. So, like, some people could be homeless, trying to, like, getting kicked out of their apartment, failing classes. Like, it's just a lot going on. Have you, anyone in this room ever thought about doing that? Have the thought of giving up, taking your life existence? And we don't, I mean, we're here on the show, parents are watching, but just be honest with y'all. You didn't do it, so I'm glad you didn't do it, but have you thought about it? No. Anybody, any three, have you thought about it? Have you thought about it? Um, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> when I was younger, but that was, yeah, I was dumb. Because I was, I didn't know better, I guess. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad that phase was over. is over because, yeah. And I'm glad that phase is over, too, because you have a lot of opportunities to be great and dynamic, and that's for every one of you all. No matter how bad life gets, if you take your life, then guess what? We'll never have the privilege of knowing what you're called to be. We'll never see you in your full manifestation, so thank you for choosing not to do that. DJ, if we got anybody want to ask the college ladies any questions, if there's anyone that would like to ask them any questions, poll any questions, just please text us right now and Deacon Jones will be glad to look at their response or just throw out some a lot of hearts and hearts and hearts and just show your love by their support. We do have someone from the studio audience that have a question to ask. Yes, ma'am. What advice would you give to uh, future Mm -hmm. And how would you have her help her parents when she leaves home? Um, just keep an open mind because you're going to go through a lot of changes. Like, I'm a completely different person I was from when I started at MSU. So, and just do what makes you happy because it'll eventually make you money. So, yeah. Okay. Hey. I would say for like a future student, don't be afraid to ask for help. I learned that like in the beginning. Like I was so used to figuring out things on my own, but I really had to reach out and ask for help, especially like with classes and stuff. So yeah, MSU was like, it's a hard school, so yeah. Um, I would say it's okay to change, like it's okay to change your major, it's okay to change like the way you look. Uh, MSU is very uh, diverse uh, with like personalities, people from like all over the country and like I would say get connected, like honestly connect with different faculty, different students and stuff like that so you can get involved and feel like you're part of something. And to make it easier on your parents, let your parents just say, like because my parents like, you need to do this, they're in this area doing this, but like do whatever you want to do because at the end of the day, it's, your, it's you that's going through the process. Yeah, your parents are there like on the side helping you, but do what makes you happy. Yeah, so that's what I would say. Does MSU offer any, any resource groups? Mm -hmm. do they have a like, lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For like, you know, women, uh, people of color? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's, yeah, there's a lot of different organizations. Is that helpful? 
Yeah, it is. This is a big topic in the younger world, elementary, middle school. Does the bully thing exist on campus? I would say no. no. People just mind their business. Yeah. Like you like you under, like once you get to campus you understand like everyone is different. So you just accept it. It's like a big city. Y'all so it's, focused on doing y'all stuff, you ain't got time to worry about everybody else. And it's yeah. like everybody's there, they're for the same purpose. So like we met two people from Africa, like that. And like when they like talk and they tell us their stories, it's so different from ours. Like you meet so many different people, like you don't have time to judge anybody. Like and everybody yeah. has different backgrounds. Um, like a lot of people that's uh, African American are from Detroit, so their stories are like, way different from ours. They talk about, no, you guys are from Battle Creek, and yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. You know, unfortunately in this country, you know, we have a. Uh, it's kind of an epidemic of college campus shootings. You know, I have a daughter that was going to Central Michigan University, and I think it was a year or two ago there was an incident up there. Um, does Michigan State uh, get in front of that? Do they have, you know how you have like your fire drills and your you know tornado drills and stuff like that? Do they prepare the students for uh, an incident like that? Is there something that, what, what is the first thing they tell you, or do they even tell you anything? Mm, I don't think they told us anything. I don't think anything. they brought that to our attention. I know before I left, my dad, because my dad, he went to a training for that, so my dad went over to me, like, what to do and procedures and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but MSU did not bring that to our attention at all. Okay. You think that's important? I yes. think it is. It, yeah. it really is. Has anybody ever brought it up to the administration? I'm not sure. I don't no? think so. Mm -hmm. Well, I have, a, I have a major concern. Uh, I have been blessed to be able to attend college at the highest level. I'm not per se a pro suggest everybody go to college. I don't think college is for everyone, even though both of my children did attend college and they all graduated. So I think there's a place for it. But where I'm concerned is I'm concerned about the people who's coming out of the schools now are almost anti-God. Now, some of you all were raised around the church. Some of y'all was raised from birth. Some of y'all are acquiring it. But there's this thing in the in these schools now where our children is coming out and they're just almost anti-God. Now, without being judgmental, and I love to be challenged, tell me what are those curriculums or what are those subjects well, what are those things that's happening every day that parents or your local pastors don't know that's causing y'all to begin to think, is there even a God? What's out there that's making that happen? I'm talking Harvard, Yale, I'm talking Michigan State, I'm talking all these schools. We're having a whole culture thing where it's almost God just like, he just there. Where is that coming from? Do you experience that? Do you see that? I don't see it, but I honestly think it's like coming in contact with different people, um, peer pressure. Maybe like some people have different beliefs and they meet someone and like they listen to them and they like change their whole perspective, basically. Okay. If you had to go from zero to 10, all three of y'all, where would you say your faith is at? Probably like my faith or like how um, many? Your faith. Probably like an eight, nine. Really? Yeah. What about you, uh, Asia? Probably like a nine. Okay, Khalil, you got two nines. <laughs> <laughs> What's yours? <laughs> um, I don't know. About an eight, nine. It's really? Like, yeah. Now, I noticed you came to church more since you've been to college than you did when you were home. Yep. Yes. Um, I mean, that type of feeling, being around that, it really helps me. Really? I come, when I go to church on Sunday, I go for altar prayer. I'm praying for my friends. A uh, successful week. It gets stressful. I really, that being around that, it really helps me. So that does help. Yes. Do they have a, a youth ministry? On campus, I know a lot of major, you know, I passed in Terre Haute for years, and ISU had what you call a campus ministry. Do they have that there, or have you not met them yet? 
they have it there. Um, it's like it's majority white, but we do have an African American gospel choir there. Okay. But I think it's more just like singing, not so as more like a church type, like you know, meeting up on Sunday or Wednesday and practicing that type of stuff. Is a campus ministry you think needed? I know we're we're what what are we forty five minutes away? Mm -hmm. Uh, it. Is that something that you think people would be interested in? If, if someone, check this out, if they if they brought a bus down, fed you guys, took you to church, and brought them back, back, back home that same day, would that, would that work? Mm -hmm. Would that be something that would work? I think yeah. it would. We would feed them before, when do we feed them? Because I know y'all get hungry. <laughs> Probably after. Yeah. So, so a bus, a bus. <laughs> would, she said, "Really? We'll, we'll give y'all breakfast to them." Okay? <laughs> so, a bus would bring y'all, pick y'all up on campus on a Sunday morning, right? And then you have all your crew jump on, drive them to the church, and and, and attend service, then eat after service, and be back. Cause y'all don't have. Do you have night classes on Sundays, or y'all don't? Mm, no. So, so it'd be a good time to get back home, right? Mm -hmm. Would that work, really? Yeah. Y'all got influence to get a folk, few folks to come with y'all? I don't really know anyone. But... Okay. <laughs> Would that be something you'd be interested in doing? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You hear that, Deegan? Mm-hmm, sure did. So, Ka Ka nice. Kalia, why you never uh, uh, suggested that? Um, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I mean, you, you always trying to get here. I do, I am. I don't know. This never crossed my mind. Okay, what about you, Asia? I know you, you know, uh, I think you, uh, well, your dad is, your dad is with my brother church. So what church were you going to when you was local? The pastor, pastor Sweet? When, when I was back at home? Yeah. I would just go with my parents. So you were going to Detroit? Yeah. Okay, well, we ain't going to take you to Detroit. We're taking you to Black Creek. All right. Uh, Terrence Todd said that Eric, uh, Bishop Combs has a group there. I guess at Michigan State is what he's saying. He does? I guess he's doing something like that now. Bishop Combs is doing uh, something I, like I, that? I believe so. And, and then Margaret, your mom, has a question for all three. Uh-oh. <laughs> Evangelist Margaret, prophetess, what you got? And she says, do you all think it is important to follow your purpose that God has given you, not just what you want to do <laughs> and why? That's the evangelist talking. Go ahead. You can answer that. You got this. What'd she say? She also called you a natural leader also. What'd she say? She says, do you think it is important to follow your purpose that God has given you? Yes. And why? Why? Mm -hmm. Say, Mom, I'll touch you later. Um. Yes, I think it is. It is important to follow your purpose that God has given you. Um. We're going to table that <laughs> Mother, we're going to table that one, okay? You're getting all deep on us, evangelist, prophetess. So tell me um, um, first thoughts that come to your mind. I try to do this with some younger names. I'm not current, so I'm trying to get new names. But if you thought of your favorite um whether it's R&B or hip hop or whatever music you listen to, who would be your favorite artist? We was just talking about this. <laughs> I, um, saying, like, I don't have a favorite artist. Okay. So. Who you said, Margaret? Now, you know your mom and watches. So you better say Kurt Franklin. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite artist right now is Ella May. Ella? Ella May. Ella May. Mm -hmm. Male, female? Female. Okay. Favorite artist? Um... I would say either Ella May or um, YNW Melly. YNW Melly. So, <laughs> don't DJ, don't we don't know Ella May. <laughs> Can someone tell me who Ella May is? Ella May seems like a church lady. Ella May. <laughs> is, is she a church lady? No. <laughs> <laughs> is Ella May a church lady? Mother of a church? Ella May? Uh, no. <laughs> so, so, what is she saying? Can anybody tell me about a song from Ella May? Buddha. Baby, daddy, Buddha. <laughs> oh, Buddha. Buddha. I heard that. My son was in my Buddha. My son was in Buddha. 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 I heard that. And Buddha Buddha. 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 No, not boot up. Boo. Like, like a boy boot. Oh. Boo. I thought 
Buddha. 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 Buddha.
these jewels. I thank you for these diamonds. I thank you for these rubies. Young spiritual daughters doing what they have to do. Yep, they get discouraged. Yep, they get distracted. Yep, sometimes they even feel like giving up. But today we cover them. I thank you for all their parents that had something to do with where they are. No, they couldn't be where they are if it wasn't for those parents. So parents, I salute you. And I thank God for them. Now God help them be all they can be. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good show, y'all. Your voice, your community.